Friday. I'm glad to see you out on this Friday afternoon. This Friday evening, I mean, it's 5, 505. We're going live with you for the Compass Paint. I uh, hope you're enjoying it this rainy day. But I hope you enjoyed your day at work, your, your day at home. Hopefully, I know y'all probably don't have any homework, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed your day. So last week we talked about a uh, spiritual reality check and what it means to worship. You know, we got a few weeks uh, of this. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the spiritual reality check and what it means to, to worship and, and stuff. So let's first go off into the Lord in prayer, then we'll go into a little devotion. It's not going to be very long. It's just a little reality check for you, you know, something that we can do. So, uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come here today. Lord, we thank you uh, just to be together, Lord. But for the ones who are watching, I hope that you put a hedge of protection and watch out over them and guide them, Lord Jesus. Be with them, Lord. Open their hearts and minds, Lord. Not only do I, I pray, Lord, right now for you to give Trish and I the, the, the words and wisdom, Lord, to speak your word, Lord, to teach your word and to be able to to do it justice, Lord Jesus. We cannot do it without you, and only you only, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So, we talked last week what it means to, to worship and, and, and how we do things. And, you know, we didn't get into many examples, but for us that know Trish or know uh, the, the people who, who worship, you know, we come here on Sundays. We sometimes don't come expecting, you know. But Trish, she comes expecting every Sunday. And I, I, I need, I value her praise because I, I, not that I mimic it, but I try to tag off of her. I try to tag off her feelings. So when, when, whenever she's raising her hands and shouting the hallelujah or hallelujah, uh, we, we need to not mimic her, but we need to sometimes praise God through the storm, you know. I come in here sometimes on Sundays and not not come expecting just going through the motions. And well, they they say whenever uh, if you get into the service what you put into it, or you get out of the service what you put into it, it's it's not necessary. You just sit there and wait for God to move. Sometimes you got to, to step up and step out in, in faith. So so when when we ask. Uh, Trish, why, you know, it's because she understands what God has done for her, you know, whether it be the fears of, of being uh, by herself or, or in a lonely place uh, or, or in church, you know, she realizes what God has done for her and how he has provided for her. And, and even at home, whenever she does stuff, you know, she prays to God for his guidance and and, and, and for security and, and stuff. So she knows what God has done. And, and God has answered those prayers with, with the fear and things of being alone. And, and it calms her heart and mind. Uh, so uh, she knows that. And he, even on, on her worst days, when she doesn't feel like praising God, she says, I'm going to praise him anyway. You know, sometimes it's like when you say it, you got to praise him through the storm. Sometimes... I don't like the term, but you fake it till you make it, you know. But you really can't fake it with the Lord because the Lord knows everything. You know, he knows if you're in a good mood or a bad mood uh, or, or whatever you're going through uh, to, to do, you know, whether you're overwhelmed, whether you have insecurities or not. So sometimes you do have to praise him through the storm to get on the other side. Uh, you know, we talked about... Uh, you know, when, when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, you know, he didn't deserve the death, death penalty. You know, it was ours. Uh, we deserved the death penalty and what we did. So when, when, when we think about that, we need to praise Jesus. You know, it doesn't come lightly that we think about when Jesus died on the cross. Uh, but whenever we go to praise him, you know, sometimes when we go up to the altar, um, when the Lord moved this past Sunday, just like we prayed about, the, 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 the following Friday, the, the Lord showed up. Uh, he wasn't a magnificent service. It, it was just extravagant. Um, just the, 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 that point of worship and music 
uh, just played and, and, and we just worshiped God the right where we were. And, and But you, you ask yourself, can it be embarrassing? Sometimes, you know, when you step out in front of a crowd, sometimes, you know, it's not that easy. It's not to be the first one out there or the first one out in front of a crowd because it makes you feel uneasy, uncomfortable. Uh, but I know sometimes that, that I may look like a fool standing up or, or jumping up out of my seat and shouting amen. But when you totally give yourself over to God, you do things that you don't necessarily worry about. You know, you kind of get it out of your mind. You, you don't think about it. Well, you know, it's kind of like when we're at Joe's high school football game and the Spartans are doing what they do and win. Well, yeah. When they <laughs> but we get excited and we get in the moment and we are yelling at the top of our lungs and we're praising our team for what they're doing. We got to be the same way with God. Yeah, absolutely. She, she brought up a good point. How many of you on Sundays or on Saturdays, which I'm hoping that they have a football season, but it doesn't look very likely. But anyway, how many of you on Friday, Saturday, or Sundays watch a football game and get screaming and yelling mm -hmm. or screaming and yelling at the refs or screaming or yelling and, and excitement for your team but you're not willing to do that on Sunday morning or Sunday evening or even Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You're not willing to stand up and show your excitement for God and for what Jesus did for you, for what he died for you on the cross. So not only that but you know when when, when Trish was growing up, she used to sit back as a teenager and, and look at people dancing in the spirit and shouting and, and you know, she and Poppy laugh. Oh, I did laugh. I laughed a lot. But then she experienced God's pow power and the Holy Ghost. And, and after that, well, to her, it doesn't matter what she looks like. It doesn't matter if you go out and dance in the spirit. Uh, or sing in tongues or anything like that. Uh, it, it's an honor for the Holy Ghost to and, and come over your body like that. It's just it's a whole new experience. It's like uh, saying you're all, like being on a basketball court or a softball field or a football field. When you go out for your team, you you do what? You go all out. You do give a hundred percent and. And that's what God is asking from us, just to give our all to him, not just a little bit. He already knows what you're going through, right. you know, uh, just like today. You know, we had several things we had to do today, and I felt overwhelmed. And But we had prayer in a vehicle uh, coming over here. Uh, at first, everything didn't work out, but at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we accomplished what we needed to do. And we're here today still teaching you this lesson and we're going to talk about worshiping God and what it means to us so let's think about it this way so there's a person in church uh, that made the comment the other day that they said uh, that they would love for, for the Holy Spirit to get in their feet and run and dance before the Lord and sometimes they get that feeling and think I need to walk up front and praise the Lord during praise and worship, but they stop. But they wonder what other people will think. Well, how many of you go to church and do the same thing? You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're in that person's footsteps. You know, we wonder what if we got up there or somebody looking at us, if we looked at us the wrong way or how we did things. Well, you know, I think about it this way. I mean, this is just my opinion, but as adults, we do the same thing. The teenagers are no different, but, you know, as adults, we sit there and we might think, hmm, I should probably go to the altar. But then what, what do we do in our mind? We're like, what's Rick going to think if I go up to the altar? What's Rick going to do? He's going to make fun of me because I went up to the altar? To me, we shouldn't be that way at all. We should say, okay, God, you want me to go to the altar? My high end better get to the altar because if God's telling you to do something, you never know 
Yeah, you might have people look at you. You might have people make fun of you. Doesn't matter. If you're doing what God says, what's well, not to say that I'm not sitting at, well, it's just I'm on the praise team and I'm singing. And what's not to say that God doesn't say, okay, church, you got to raise your hand. You got to worship the Lord. You have to worship me. And what if I sit there and I say, okay, God, I hear you. But what's Rick going to think? Or what's Levi going to think? But what if what's really happening is God is using me because maybe Levi's sitting there going, if Trish raises her hand, I'm going to raise my hand. If Trish raises her hand, I'm going to the altar. But if I don't listen to God and I don't obey what God's saying to me, then not only am I hurting myself and missing out on the blessing, I could be affecting what Levi needs. Yeah, absolutely. Just like this past Sunday, we were singing a song and we sang it probably two or three times. Well, I didn't sing it. They, they, they sang it. Martin sang it. And they kept playing and playing. And I'm like, the Lord's telling me to go to the altar. And, and I just sat there. And, and I still held my guitar. And I just sat there. And we go through another song. And it's not a song that I actually play. It's not something I follow. So I'm just sitting there. And just thinking, well, I should go to the altar. And then another time goes around and we sing the song again. And finally I said, Lord, this is it. I'm on the altar. I, I don't know what your plans are. I don't know what you, you need from me. But I'm going to worship the Lord. So I went out there and I raised my hands. And that's all I remember. Uh, it's this the, the, the thought of the Lord being engulfed inside your body and inside your heart. That sometimes you got to give way. You know, they say the Holy Ghost it, it is a gentleman. You know, he's not going to do, make you do anything that you don't want to do, but he sure will make you feel uncomfortable. That's right. Uh, you know, he, he's not going to make you shout if you don't want to shout. He's not going to make you run the house if you don't want to run the house. But he will put conviction on you. He, you know, it will make you feel a little different than what you normally would feel. Uh, but so. And there's a reason for that. You're sure. So in, in, in Luke 9, 26, it goes like this. It says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. So what's that saying? You know, not only if you're ashamed of the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus, you'll also be ashamed of the things that you do in your own name. Uh, the things that you do under your own conscience. Uh, so, and personally, I don't want God to be ashamed of me. I don't want him to think, well, I'm ashamed of Rick. I'm sure he does. And I'm, I'm sure even though I'm my own worst critic, so, but I'm, I don't want him to be ashamed of me when it comes to worship. I don't want him to be ashamed of me when it comes to doing things. So, so the the, 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 the the person that I just told you about, about worshiping, but the worship right now is a noun. Remember when we talked about being noun and a verb, there, there's no action in it. So whenever you worship the Lord, you're just sitting there and you're doing nothing, uh, that, that's a noun. You know, it's a, it has no action. And what we need to do, and not just y'all, but, but us too, uh, Rick and Trish, uh, uh, we need to worship and put it as in a verb. We need to put action, put action on it. So, so Trisha, really, th th there's an example. You know, if anybody that, that does the, the, the paracord bracelets or makes stuff out of paracord, just, if, if you just had the paracord, it's just a rope. You know, it's nothing together. But those, it's two different colors on this bracelet. Oh, uh, Whenever they're not one strand or two different strands, in order to put them together, you have to connect them somehow. You have to melt them and bind them together. And that's where God comes into play. That's where things start to get interesting. That's before you weave it and knit it into a bracelet or into a necklace or into something that you want. So 
when we take that paracord and we melt it in and put it together and bind it together and then we start weaving it, it's like Jesus in the Bible. It's about putting point A and point B together and we come out with the destination. The, the, the Bible is our guidance. It is our roadmap uh, for what we do and how we perceive things. So God binds us all together. He, if we add God to ourselves and let him guide us, then look what happens. He knits us and fits us together. He puts us to where we want to know to, to where we need to be. But the rope by itself can't do anything. But the rope when molded like God molds us, well, it's something that we can be. It's something that we can show off. Our worship can change our situations. Our worship can, uh, and our participation at church can change who we are and honestly who we will become and just as Christians not just as Christians but as a human being you know when we praise something if we have positivity uh, Trish will tell you I'm probably the world, world's worst in negativity uh, but she as is a great example and I lean on her tremendously in the word of God for positivity uh, for, for, for guidance for things you know when, when the day seems grim or grim and, and, and bleak it doesn't seem like but I'll, I'll, I'll start reading the Bible and I'll look and see how Trish is doing and she's got a smile on her face what well, brightens up my day it makes me feel a little bit better so and then when we go to worship, when we change our attitude from what we was to now, like I had a bad day today, the things that we've had to do overwhelm me. But sitting here right now, I'm changing my attitude. We come here to praise God. We're in church right now. Even though it's Friday, it's not a Wednesday, it's not a Sunday. It's Friday. But we're doing God's work, and you're doing God's work by watching. And hopefully you're following along. And that is God's work. That is what we do. We worship God. It doesn't matter if it's on a Wednesday or a Sunday. It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. Any day that ends in Y should be a day we worship God. It should be a day that we praise the Lord. Uh, in Psalms 151 and 6, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with a lute and harp. Praise Him with a timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now here's the thing. Verse 6 says it. By itself. We didn't need nothing else. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Right. It doesn't say if you feel like it. It doesn't say if you, if you already have everything. It says if you have breath, whether it's good or bad things that's happening in your life, praise the Lord. So by praising the Lord and by being active in participation at church through worship, we actually are changing the outcome of how things could go for us. It's like Trish stated before. What if, what, what if I was sitting in the pew and I'm just sitting there and I'm doing nothing, but there's somebody watching me? And you're thinking, well, that's not nice. It's not nice for somebody to watch me. But the, the Holy Ghost is on them, you know, they're convicted them, but they're saying well, if Rick gets up and moves today, I'm going up there. That's right. I'm not going up there by myself, but it's one more person goes up there, I'm going up there. Mm -hmm. So what you do, you step out, you see, and the Lord says, go up there, and you go up there to the altar. And they say, you know, you have a hand on your shoulder. And that person's praying with you. You know, it this takes one step. You know, you might be the, the guidance. You know, like Trish holds my positivity. You know, she is the glue that holds... Of our family together in our house, you know, for positivity. I look for her for her guidance in that. Now, I read the Bible every day, but still I have down days. But I look for her for her positivity. 
to change my attitude because I have a terrible attitude. But, you know, there's, there's this magnificent scripture and, and we got to seek the Lord, you know, whether it's bad or good. So Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and he who him not, it will be opened. It doesn't say if, it doesn't say when, it just says if you ask, it will be given. Sure. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will open. It doesn't mean it's going to be on your time. It doesn't mean that it's going to be uh, whenever you want it to happen. Sometimes you have a storm over here. Sometimes you're in a bad season. Maybe it's not your season. Maybe uh, last week we talked about a door. Uh, we, we talked about a door being in front of you. And God has led you to this door. I'm going to be the first to tell you, if God led you to the door, he's going to lead you past the door. He's going to take you beyond that door. Do not give up at the door. That is not where your victory is. That's not where your victory lies. So what I'm saying is when you're in this season of negativity, if you're in this season of anger, disbelief because of what's happening in the world today, give it time. Praise God. Read the Bible and pray because your time is coming. The season will pass and positivity will become to you. Blessings will be coming to you. Thank God. So think about it this way. If you want something from your parents or parent or even your wife or even your husband, and I'm going to talk talking to you guys out there, if you want your your your, your wife or your girlfriend or, or your mom or dad to do something for you, sometimes you gotta be good. And but they want something in return from you. Like if you want to go out fishing or if you want to go to a football game or if you want to go ride motorcycles, you know sometimes you gotta do this list, what I call the honeydew list, to get to play on Saturday. You know, we work, myself, we work 40 plus hours a week, but during the week I've got to do extra things uh, to be able to play on Saturday. Now there's things that come up this week, of course, rain and stuff, and stuff you do for your family that you're not able to go out and play. But this is the part of sometimes you got to do what you're asked. So whenever you want to do things, uh, your, your, your mom or dad or your husband or wife are going to say will you do this for me then I'll see you about you doing that for me so why do we expect God to be any different you know if we want something from God sometimes we got to praise him we got to give him affirmation we got to give him the acknowledgement that you know he, he's not what, what they say a dry God you know God is active God is alive and Jesus is alive and they want you to do things for them. They want you to worship him. So the question is, we're going to get ready to wrap this up. Which one are you? Are you present? Are you, or, or are you just making a present? God can spot the difference. So here's your spiritual reality check. God doesn't care about the outward appearance of your faith. He doesn't matter what you look like. You can dress up. You can pretend. But God knows the difference. God knows where you belong. God knows where your heart is. God knows where your faith is. God knows where your praise is. You know, the stuff that I went through today is mere past. God has forgiven me for if, I did, if I've done anything wrong. But God sees where my heart is today and he sees where he is right now and I want to praise God I want you to see me praising God and that's where we're going to go you know we're just going to thank him and we're going to worship him and we're just going to praise him for everything he's done so so he, he says what's really going on deep down inside of you what's motivating you to be where you are today say what you say and do what you do so what why do you do the things that you do so if it's not all about him, if it's not all about God, if it's more about obligation or socializing rather than growing in his word and in the service to his kingdom, then it's not all he wants. So when you go to church, be active. 
When you go to your, your Wednesday night Bible study, be active. You know, show, show the pastor, show God that you want to be involved. Uh, have a voice. Uh, when you're in youth group, uh, whoever's watching Teen Wise, if you're in youth group, be, be interactive. Uh, have, we'll have a conversation. You're learning. I'm learning. Trish is learning. You know, we learn from each other. You know, we're not here as know-it-alls. God gives us the words. God gives us the, the ability to do this. The study and the stuff that we do, the lessons that we got, yes, it's all on paper, but 50 or 75% of the stuff I just told you is not even on this paper because God gave me the words. Right. Not, not that I cannot do anything without God. Right. So to end this, and we're going to say in Scripture, Psalms 51, 16 and 17, it says, For you do not deserve sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will despise. You know, we thank you. We, we, we thank you for your, your, your time. I know it was, this is a short lesson. I know it was, but it was a continuous from last week. Next week, we're going to go into what we're going to call part two. And we're going to have four parts. Uh, it, we may break them up to give you a little bit less of a lesson like we've been going into. Uh, but join us for, for church uh, this Sunday. You know, come expect and bring your praise face on. Bring your worship face on. If you're new, we're at 805 Henson Avenue, Parisburg, Virginia, and we welcome you. We welcome you to this church, and God welcomes you, you to this church. And if you want us to pray for you, put it in the comment box. Or give us a way that we can get in touch with you. Sure. You know, we would love to pray for you. We even pray with you. Sure. Anything that we can do, just like we pray over this box. And that's what we're going to do now. And here's the thing with this spiritual reality check that we're on. Last week, we challenged you guys to start praying today for Sunday service. I firmly believe in my heart that because of those prayers that you started on Friday and you did on Saturday, when you come into church on Sunday, you were ready to worship. And because we were ready and we didn't have to get ready to worship, God showed up. And just like he showed up Sunday, he'll show up again this Sunday. So we got to come prepared. So let's prepare again. Not only for God to show up, but let's pray for one another. You know, in this trying time, whether it be political or the COVID-19 or, or whatever your dis distractions are, whatever you do that takes you away from God, that takes you away from the church, let's pray for God to put that away. Let's pray, come expecting for God to show up again. You know, he showed up today. You may not think about it, but I got a little loud. I mean, I felt God in this place. I mean, he, he was here. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Sunday or Wednesday. We come worship the Lord wherever and whenever we are. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time that you allowed us to come together. I thank you for allowing us to talk about worship and, and, and what it means. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, that, that you will just guide us and lead us in the path that you want us to go. Lord, not lead us just in ordinary life, but in spiritual belief and spiritual sanctification. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will touch each and every one of us, Lord. And I know the church is just a building, Lord Jesus, but when we congregate on Sunday, we just pray for an outpouring of your blessings, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, over everything that is in this box, every note, every word, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you watch out over us and guide us. Lord, touch these needs and wants, Lord, as you see fit and in your time, Lord. We thank you for every word that you gave us today. We thank you for the power and the glory that is in you. We thank you for the power and the glory that you have passed down upon us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for everything. And I praise you right now. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord. We are not worthy, Lord, and without you, we are nothing. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.